Another way to analyze future investments is through calculating the future value of the present investment. This will show you what the value of your investment today will be in X years. Notice you can't compare this directly to your future payments, as each of these payments can also be reinvested. Also, you'll need to be careful of inflation when analyzing the future value, as it can decrease the purchasing power of your future dollars. Now we'll show you how to create the future value of the same $150,000 investment we were thinking of making, assuming a 12% return. This is likely to be a riskier investment. Select the F3 cell. Notice the formula for this calculation is equals FV investment return comma number of periods the investment will grow comma additional payments per year comma your current investment comma and the type. Notice type refers to when the payment is made. One is at the end of the period. Two is at the beginning of the period. For this calculation we did a quick and dirty calculation entering in the numbers directly instead of referencing the cells. We won't be able to do sensitivity analysis on this calculation. Now we'll show you how to calculate the present value of the payments we received. The present value shows us a value in today's dollars of a series of payments. This can help us make better investment decisions by comparing different future cash flows in today's dollars. Remember how that pesky inflation keeps eating away at how much our dollars can buy. This tool can be very useful for investment decisions as it will show us the expected value of a series of payments. If we do this correctly, it should be equal to the opposite of our NPV. There are two ways of doing this. We could calculate only the payments and compare them to the initial investment, or we could calculate the PV of the payments and subtract out the initial investment. The calculation for the net present value is PV, discount type, number of payments, payment amount, type. Notice there are two commas between amount and type. This is because we could include information about the future value of the payments if we had it. Also, notice the discount rate and the number of payments uses absolute referencing. Dollar sign $x, dollar sign $y. This is because when we copy the formula to San Francisco, we don't want Excel to update the reference cell for these two items as they are constant. Press Enter key to complete your formula. Now we're going to show you how to create a schedule showing you your return on our 12% investment. A schedule will show you in more detail how your money is growing. We've already selected the cell G6 for you. Select the formula bar and we'll enter the formula. The formula for our interest is the investment return X, the account balance beginning for the year. Click tab to enter the formula and select the box to the right. Now that we know the account balance beginning, we can calculate the year and balance by adding the interest to the account balance. Here we want to use relative cell referencing as we want the cell referred to change as we copy the formula. Lastly, the account balance beginning for the next year will be the same as the end of year balance for the previous year. Now that we have the necessary formulas in, we can simply copy them down through year 10. Note that we use cell F7 as our account balance beginning template, as cell F6 doesn't contain our formula. Select cell G7. We can also calculate the average interest received. Note that this doesn't give us too valuable of information in this case because we're dealing with the time value of money and the average doesn't account for this, unless we calculate the present value of each payment. The formula for this is average all values. In this case, the values we are looking to average are G6 through G15. Click Enter and finished. Now we'll do some very basic sensitivity analysis. To show you how this works, select the discount rate and change it to 7%. Press the Enter key. Notice that the NPV and IRR of the two locations has changed. Now we'll change the initial investment for the Boston location. Select cell B5 and change the investment amount to 17,000. Press the Enter key. 
Notice the 2000 difference created a fairly large difference in the NPV and IRR. In our investment with a 12% return, we'll change the initial investment to 170,000. Select cell F6. Press the Enter key. The schedule and the average interest rate have been updated according to our change. Do you remember we didn't use cell referencing to calculate the future value? Notice that the value didn't update when we changed our assumptions. This is the reason why you want to use cell referencing. It allows you to create a dynamic analysis that can change as you change your assumptions.